Hey everyone, I'm Karen Walby Solomon, and welcome to What's IGN Crushing On, IGN Africa's official entertainment podcast. I'm your host, and I'm joined as always by my producer and editor Rebecca Barchers. So, this is a show where we discuss all things entertainment and pop culture with a new guest every week. We bring recommendations, news, and fun facts sometimes touching on the more serious issues surrounding these topics. This week we have a very special episode for you, featuring the new Netflix film Riding with Sugar. The synopsis of Riding with Sugar is, Once a scholarship student with a great future, Joshua dreams of winning a BMX cycling championship as a means to find a better life, but fate intervenes in the form of an accident that shatters his knee. He is given shelter and a job by Mambo, who houses refugee teenagers from all over Africa. When Joshua meets Olivia, a talented young dancer of mixed race from a well-to-do family, it brings him into a world he has never known before. Her insights cast a shadow over Mambo's agenda and cause Joshua to rise above all odds and find a way to a brighter future. So I watched this a couple of weeks ago and I was actually quite impressed. It's always quite jarring seeing such high quality, crisp films that are made in and set in South Africa. So I really, really enjoyed that. The writer and director of the film, Khan Award winner, Sunu Ganera, originally wrote this 17 years ago. And he first made it into a short film before making it into a feature length film, which we see today. This version stars British actor Charles Minet as Joshua, Hakim K. Kazim as Mambo, Simona Brown as Olivia, and we had an opportunity to catch up with Charles and Hakim at the press junker. So this episode features interviews with them too. It's quite short, snappy interviews, mainly about their characters and the films. So it's a little bit different to what we usually do here. It's not the long form questions we ask them about their lives, etc. And you might pick up that I was a bit nervous. So if you hear me like my voice suddenly going higher, don't be alarmed. That's just me being a little bit nervous or being a little bit off my guard. But... It was really great to chat to both of them. They both had like an extreme amount of passion for the film, for the roles, and for Sunaganera and his work. So, um, so obviously, that's always it's always a great space to be talking to people who really love what they do. So, yeah, just listen. We have um, coming up the trailer of the film which you can get sort of like a feel for what it's like you can obviously watch the trailer also on youtube um or on netflix but yeah listen to the trailer now what's your story joshua the one you're not telling us i finally got my shot wanna be vmx pro I'll be back, you'll see. I've been through us. Is Joshua your real name? Did you know these bougie girls with their bougie cars? They can get you into trouble. Joshua, come close, don't be shy. I won't bite. I need to see a doctor. Right now. Tell me where in the world to be safe for a young black refugee. Nothing special, Joshua. Me, not you. Every crash, every tumble, every knock, break, and crack, all of it worth it. Grow up, Joshua. Grow up! You're not a child anymore. Who are you? Okay, so our first guest is Charles Mnene, who plays Joshua in Riding with Sugar. Charles is a British film, TV and theatre actor who has appeared in Young Wallander, Casualty and Misfits. 
He's a great actor who truly embodies this role and, then, and has us feeling compassion and sympathy for the character. Here's what Charles had to say about why he was attracted to this project and how he interpreted the role of Joshua. Hi, Darren. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thanks to you. I'm, I'm good, Karen. Thank you. I'm Karen from IGN Africa's podcast. So yeah, so what attracted you to do this project? Um, thank you for the question. Um, what got me to want to do writing with sugar is uh, the story itself and the vast range of emotion and challenges that would would come up from having to learn an accent, um, studying and building a character background that, that is so rich, the learning of um, how to operate a bicycle and learn some stunt work as well, and to work with an amazing director like Suno Gonero. Okay. So riding with sugar is interesting because we don't usually get to see the experiences of refugees in South Africa. Um, so, and I think the immigrant experience is so unique. So what research did you do to get into this character? I studied the, the short period of where I thought um, he would be in Zimbabwe. Then I mm. looked at South Africa. I also researched the... The, the, the life of a young man from Zimbabwe in his age range, the education he would receive, how, how he'd be aware of the challenges he's facing. Um, hmm. Those are the points I focused on. Because he's such a resilient character, Joshua, yeah. I didn't focus on the fact that, okay, he went through so much. I made sure I learned it, right? Hmm. But that's what I think made him who the character we see before us, right? Somebody with great vulnerability and great strength. Um, these are the, 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 the points I would focus on in, in finding the character. So with the character of Joshua, did you think that like BMXing was a means to an end for him? Or do you think it was, you know, that was the dream? Well, I think for, for Joshua, because, you know, in Riding with Sugar, it focuses on the fact that he's an amazing BMX um, mm -hmm. rider and he wants to gain a championship. And that's the means, mm. uh, uh, the means to, to an end. When that's snatched away, he has to find a new means if that yeah. gets snatched away. And because I, I put in his background that he's, he's quite well-educated, right? Yeah. But then he, he had to leave his education in Zimbabwe. This is the, the story I, I built behind. So I would say that if it's a means to an end, he always finds another way if there is no way. <laughs> Because that's how I, I find this character. I see, him, I see him as somebody who keeps getting knocked back. And most people, I think, would just feel like it's okay to give up. And Joshua does never gives up. He always, yeah. he always shows us something new that we might not have been thinking about and how to, to find a way for ourselves. Because mm. you know? that's the message I, I, I get, one of the many messages that, 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 that I get while being, being entertained, watching Joshua doing amazing BMX stunts, mm -hmm. right? Looking for love. Um, friends and how he interacts with people and how every time the card is the deck you didn't want he'll mm -hmm. find a way to get the deck that he does want or make make the best he can with the deck that he has like in this whole film like that's 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 what I think about it you know so I, what I noticed was that the character has like such like a sense of darkness about him but when he meets Olivia he seems to be like so carefree and joyful so, like, how did you approach, like, these two different sides of his character? I think, like, I wouldn't say there's, there's, dark, Joshua has a darkness. There is darkness in the film, right? Yeah. And you could say Olivia is the light, right? Mm. You could also say that about Joshua. You could also say that about the, the kids, right? What I find that brought the, the facets of Joshua into, if he, if he does have a darkness, because you are right, if you are, if that's what you see, but mm. If he finds that there's a darkness, right, in him, or we might perceive that to be, or living would be the light. And like you said, whenever they interact, there's there's a there's a light, and that was predominantly because of work with Simona Brown. She mm. brought a lot of that, and I give her credit in every scene that interacts with her and Joshua. It's because of her that we find this this joy that we see in Joshua that we might not see all the time because of mm. all the things he goes through. So, yeah. yeah. So if it was you, what advice would you have given Joshua after his accident? 
<laughs> Jesus Christ, <from> Nazareth. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the thing is, like, I don't think I could give someone like Joshua advice. I think he'd give me advice. Um, the only thing I could tell him is, congratulations and well done. I'm, I'm inspired by you. And that's what I love about, about the character, about the, the story of writing with Sugar. So, you know, I, I, I'd ask you, what advice would you give Joshua? Because I'm not qualified. I am not qualified. <laughs> I think I'm even less qualified, so. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> if you have an answer, please share it with me. I'll take it and take it to the next interview. I'll borrow it if you'd be so kind. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so was it your first time in Cape Town when you were filming? Um, this was my second time, but mm -hmm. my first time on a feature film. And the first time was literally like a blink of the eye. I was here, there for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And this time I got to spend like three months plus there. So, you know, I fell in love with the city. The city left a mark on my heart. And the project of Riding with Sugar is part of my DNA. I know it sounds cheesy, yeah. but, you know, like we, we, I work so hard. Stuart works so hard. Akima, Simona, everybody works so hard for us to foresee this vision that Sunu has been putting in for 17 years for all of us to be able to watch this this film. You know, so Riding with Sugar is like a monumental achievement. And I think it adds to the rich lexicon of African cinema, mm -hmm. right? And it's just a pleasure to shoot in South Africa. Beautiful background, beautiful city, beautiful people, you know, and that's an understatement. So, yeah. So what, what made Riding with Sugar so unique to the other projects that you've done before? I would say the, 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 the storyline. Mm -hmm. um, the character of Joshua, um, his background, what he's trying to achieve, um, the demands that I put on myself um, to, to, to manifest the character as honestly as I, as I could. I think these are just like the few things I could say make, mm -hmm. make it a unique experience. Um, it's also a life, like, you know, life-defining moment when I was working mm -hmm. on the project. I felt that, I felt like that, so... So there's, there's a lot of things I could speak on, um, you know, working with Sunu Gunero, just like, that was great, mm -hmm. you know, so working with Akeem, Simona, and um, the whole cast. So it's just, uh, every day was an experience, and um, I, I treasure it. So what do you hope that people take from watching this? I hope people can see the love that I see in the film, and um, I'm sure people think that's me being biased, but maybe I am. <laughs> And I hope they leave on an upbeat and not a downbeat. Because mm. it's, yeah, it's like, it's like, um, it's a roller coaster, but you never know that you're on a roller coaster. It's just, you know, you're having fun. But it's, there's something about the character that you know he will make it through in the end. He has that resilience okay. about it. Yeah, him. he does, but you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Did he make it? Did he not? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So, so what was it like working with the cast? Like you said, you enjoyed it, but specifically, what did you enjoy about working with this cast? I, I like the individualism of every cast member. Mm. Um, and that's not to dispose of the fact that there was great unity on set, you know, and, and the, there was great commitment. But I just like the personalities that I met on, on set, um, like, like really cool people, like mm. you know, the children, the, the adults. <laughs> you know, makeup, costume, like just, that's amazing people. And um, it, it made it worthwhile. It made the hard days just, you know, just a walk in the sun, you mm. know? So that's, that's why I liked about like really, really amazing cast, you know? It was, no, it really was. Um, so, so lastly, um, so what's next for you? Oh, I'm waiting for the 27th of November. Uh. To watch the, watch the with you. That's, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Nothing not else is going on. <laughs> Nothing else. But thank you so much for doing this chat with us. And um, you were amazing. The film is amazing. Thank you so much for making it and for putting so many people's stories out there. Thank you. That was Charles Mnene. Our second guest is Hakim K. Kazim. You might remember him from the Fresca ads growing up or in Hotel Rwanda. Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End, Roots, and Dynasty. Hakim plays the role of Mambo, the father figure slash educator slash mentor for this community of refugees in Cape Town. We chatted about refugee experience, playing the anti-hero, filming in South Africa, and what he has coming up next. 
can listen to the interview here. So how are you doing? How's the day been? I'm good. Yeah, I know it's been, it's been long, yeah, but it's been good, yeah. <laughs> can you imagine? Long, so I like it's long. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what attracted you to this project? I really love the movie. It's great. Um, yeah, um, you know, just the idea of really being able to sort of tell an Afrofuturistic story from uh, from very much an Afro uh, an African perspective, and uh, you know, the, the character obviously, who uh, you know I love, is very complex and uh, multi layered, and uh, and Sunu, you know, that was the other one as well. Mm-hmm. Sunu and I have known each other for a while, and so the opportunity arose where I could work with him, and it's on a project I know he's been working on for many years, and yeah. so it's real. Uh, Blessing to be able to come and help him put this together. So, what was it like working with Sunu? It was great. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, it was great because you know, as I said, we've known each other for a long mm. time. Uh, we've journeyed together. We were in the states together at some point, and you know, both pursuing our respective careers, and uh, and um, you know, and then we sort of kept in touch when we both got back. You know, so uh, yeah, it's really, it was a real joy working with him. It's it's. it's you know, and I just just to support his vision. I mean, he's, you know, yeah. I know how I, I always still think of him as a very talented filmmaker, and uh, to see his vision come to life is uh, be part of that is, is a real joy. The role of Mambo um, is very ambiguous, but do you think the character was motivated by wanting to help the children that he took under his wing? Yeah, I think he's motivated to be a picture of definitely helping helping the, the next generation find mm. their feet. You know, he himself is a refugee. He himself has gone through the struggle, so he sees himself as, uh, as, 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 as a sort of, you know, as a, a sort of father figure to these, to these young mm. people, and trying to help them find a way. And you might not agree with his methods of trying to do that, but uh, you know, for him, it's, uh, it's a means to an end. That's why he does what he does, you know, mm. and he does it in the way that he does. Yeah. So, why do you think that Mumbo took an interest in Joshua? You know, I think Mumbo sees himself and Joshua, the younger, the younger self, I think that very much so. And, uh, you know, you can see that this boy is a very clever boy. And, uh, you know, for Mumbo, it's all about education. It's all about how do I prepare the next generation so that we, they can eventually be in a position and be educated enough to, to, to allow the continent and allow the continent to grow in the way that it should do for them and their, and their children and their children's children. So Mumbo sees himself very much like that. Mumbo is sort of a revolutionary and intellectual. Uh, mm. um, you know, a, a struggle icon in his own sort of way. So he, you know, and, and his struggle is for a, for the betterment of the continent as a whole. So Mumbo sees sees a bit of uh, Joshua in, 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 in himself in that way. So, um, so what is it about the character of Mumbo that that you enjoyed playing? Um, you know, I like the. You know, I think I enjoyed the complexity of the man. You know, the fact mm. that he was not. No, there was, you know, Teddy wasn't straightforward, and that he really believed and had a, a mission to sort of uh, to do good, but in his own, you know, because he understood the, the bigger struggle to do it in, mm. in his own way, and also he's come he's come from a place of, of, of pain and, uh, and 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 struggle himself, so he understands it. He understands what these kids need to yeah. to, to, to move forward and achieve. Your character had the amazing line of, tell me where in the world is safe for a young black refugee. And like, especially with like, um, you know, the xenophobia issues that we have here in South Africa. Can you speak to how important it is for the stories of refugees to be told? Yeah, I think it's important for the stories of, 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 you know, I think it's really important for us as Africans to tell our stories, period. You know, and I think that what Mambo tries to do within this film is, uh, is give the bigger picture that these are, you know, these may be refugees, but they're, they're home. They're home because it's their continent. We're yeah. all part of the same. Continent. We all have to, and then in a way, the and that's why they're from all over the place. They're not just one. You know what I mean? Not just refugees from one place. They have molded the family of these of these uh, 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 these different Africans to be to, to become one. And that, to me, is the bigger picture of what he's trying to say. And this film tries to say is that. There's strength in the unity of us moving forward as, as, as Africans, and uh, and that's where we'll, we'll find our power. What is it like being back in South Africa to film Riding with Sugar? 
Uh, it's great. I love it in South Africa. It's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's really, uh, yeah, it's beautiful. It's the great sets, great crews. Mm. Um, it was a real joy to, to be back here and film. And I, but I film here a lot. I do, you know, I film here quite a bit. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not used to it, but it's always good to sort of, and I love filming here. You know, it's, it's you know, there's so many, such a variety, there's so much variety and, and there's so much sort of uh, local talent in terms, especially mm. in terms of crews. And so it's a great place to sort of come and film. So what were your favorite scenes of the film to film? Well, we're not giving too much away. My, my favorite scene, one of the most important is when I'm with all the young people, the young people and, uh, and celebrating who they are and becoming, of, you know, them becoming uh, and, and, and uh, uh, celebrating their distinctive Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that was one of my favorite films, things to, to, to film in this film. So um, what is it like working with Charles and Simona? I yeah, they're both lovely, lovely young people. So it was a real joy working with both of them. And, uh, you know, they both committed heavily to the film and, uh, and to, to, to making the film a good, good piece. And, uh, you know, it's nice to work with lovely, just lovely people. So it was a really mm. nice journey. So if you had to give Joshua advice after his BMX accident, what would you have said to him? I think the same thing that Mambo said to him. <laughs> education. Um, was, uh, education, yeah, which is key, you know, key. And I'd say that to any, every, any and every young person, mm. you know, without education, you know, it's, it's, uh, it makes life a lot harder. But if you're educated, you can go anywhere. So that's that. That will be the key, really, is education, education, education. With, with Joshua, and I think for Mumba too, like his their past experiences almost like haunt them throughout the film. Mm -hmm. So, how important do you think it is to talk about the trauma that many refugees carry with them, and a lot of immigrants too? Um, in terms of the film, you know, in terms of the film, yes, it's it's very very important, and in terms of you know, every refugee, you know, you're, you're leaving your country, you're leaving a place that you know and love. So there's obvious trauma that's, yeah, and that, you know, you know, as best as it can, it should be, it should be addressed. And I think the film tries to address that, Mambo certainly tries to sort of address that with the way he interplays with those young people that are traumatized by having to have left their space and their loved ones. And he's created a family for them. And uh, the need for, for refugees to come together as a family in a space is, is, is very, very important. And uh, Mamba highlights this in, and uh, highlights the fact that there has to be a unity within this space so that you can occupy this space and own it. Yeah, so how important do you think it is to have made communities, like created communities that are necessarily the families that you're born into? No, very much so, especially, especially if you're on your own, especially if you, mm. you know, you've left community behind especially if there's no one else there you need a community and every no matter with whether or not you're a refugee or not you know people have communities they have church communities yeah. they have you know soccer communities they have you know so everybody finds some sort of community so they, in some way so that they can belong to and feel at home with mm -hmm. and that gives them a greater sense of self and a greater sense of security of them being able to operate in the place that they are at that time You've obviously starred in many films and TV series. So what have been your career highlights that you would say? Um, I think when I first got to America, that was a great career highlight for me, you know, uh, and doing a film that was nominated for an Oscar, uh, for Oscars, uh, when I did Hotel Rwanda, but yeah. working on some big, huge people like Pirates of the Caribbean and... So, you know, so yeah, I mean, I've had a few, and then, and then doing this, it's been a real delight coming back to mm. do this as well. So, um, yeah, you know, I've been lucky, I've done some lovely stuff and I've enjoyed it. So what's next for you? Well, who knows, when this pandemic is over, that's when we'll really know what's next. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the market's holding, we're in a holding pattern. Uh, but I have a couple of things that have been released. There's something on, I think Disney Channel releasing a, of uh, Black Beauty starring Kate Winslet and Mackenzie Foy, which I did here mm -hmm. in Cape Town last year, the year before last year. So that's coming out. I did a TV oh, series in the UK on Sky, which is coming out too. So people can watch out for those. They'll be out sooner or later. Then. Okay. Thank you so much for, for doing this interview with us and for doing this film. Thank and you. it was really, really great. Oh, 
right. Take care. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. So that was our interview with Hakim K. Kazim. You can watch Riding with Sugar on Netflix worldwide. Something that I wanted to say about why I enjoyed the film so much um, up top that I completely forgot, um, which I'm going to add now, is I really liked that it was a story about a refugee in South Africa where xenophobia is so rife. And it tells a story of community, of trauma, of love. It's a beautiful personal tale and very worth checking out. So if you're looking for plans this week, if you're looking for something to watch that's not Christmassy, that's a little bit closer to home, check out Riding with Sugar on Netflix worldwide. So, crashing on. This week, I'm crashing on two TV shows. I couldn't pick which one to choose, so I chose them both. The first is The Undoing. So, The Undoing stars Nicole Kidman and Hugh Grant as a married couple. In this very rich Manhattan neighborhood, they send this, their child to this exclusive school, and then there is a murder. And it's the drama that unfolds after the murder. I don't want to say too much because it's going to give it away. Um, it premiered 30th of November on Mnet, and it should be available on DSTV now and probably Showmax soon. But it is gripping and enthralling and it's very much like um big little lies but also reminds me of girl on the train gone girl type vibes so thrilling loved it another show which is currently on showmax and also on a dcv channel one magic or something i don't know one of those mnt channels is p valley so p valley is set in like this Mississippi small town and it's set at a strip club and the strip club is sort of like at the center of things in the town the town like a casino wants to move in in the town and it's small not the casino small the town is small and it's sort of like the story of the strippers in the strip club but written by a woman filmed by all like all female directors it's sexy it's hot but it's also it doesn't feel like like you like you know what i mean like it's not like you don't feel like embarrassed after watching it all like it's not seedy it's just like it's just wild shot it's a great story brilliant characters it's funny it tells interesting stories which you know it's stories of real people but it doesn't also feel like unrealistic so that's what i enjoyed about it so yes check out p valley i think there's two or three episodes out on showmax now and doing one episode will be out. Um, great TV happening right now. So yeah, that's all from me. You can find me at, at Karen Walby on Instagram, at Karen Walby's with an S on Twitter, and sign up for my newsletter, Wild Streams, at wildstreams.substack.com. You can also follow us on YouTube. I'm crashing on Roundtable about the current season 4, which was a lot of fun. And if you didn't attend, you really missed out. It will be up there this week so you can watch and laugh along with the rest of us. The podcast can be found at, at Crushing on Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You can find more information about this and all our other episodes at our website, crushingonpodcast.com and send any feedback to crushingonpod at gmail.com. Join our Facebook group, Crushing On Club, where we chat about the show, celebrity news, recommendations, the whole shebang. Let us know what you think about what was discussed in this week's episode by sending us a voice note or email to crushingonpod at gmail.com. The show is produced by me, Karen, and Rebecca Barches. The show is edited and engineered by Rebecca Barches, our logo was designed by Nathifa Marouf, and the show was created in partnership with IGN Africa. If you like the show, tell everyone that you can any way that you can. Keep up to date with all our episodes by subscribing to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And please rate and review the episodes on Apple Podcasts, as it helps others find the show. We'll be back next week with another in-depth conversation with a pop culture lover. See you then.